The hellfire is a place of the most extreme suffering, the most extreme pain of every level that you can imagine, physical, mental, spiritual pain and suffering and torment. It is a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will burn the skins of the people and then He will recreate their skins and burn the skins again so that the people in there will taste the punishment. It is a place of heat, a place of, place of pain, a place of suffering. The people will cry in agony for water. They will cry for a drink, something to cool them, and they will be given a water. They will be given a drink, but it is a boiling water that will scald their faces and burn their insides. And they will drink from a river, a river that is made from the pus that flows out of the wounds of the people of the hellfire. The wounds of the people of the hellfire will ooze pus. And this pus will gather together to form a river. And this is all they will have to drink. And their food will be the tree of Zakum, a tree the fruits of which are like the heads of devils. And this tree is so bitter that if the people, when they try to eat it, they can't eat it, but they will force themselves because there is nothing else to eat in the hellfire. A place where the people will neither live nor will they die. A place where the people will fall into despair, arguing with each other, admonishing each other, criticizing each other. The fire will surround them on every place. The smallest punishment of the hellfire. The smallest punishment of the hellfire is that a person will wear a pair of sandals of fire and their brain will boil. That's the smallest punishment. And they will think that they have the worst punishment, but it is the least punishment. This is the hellfire. This is the hellfire. The fire that has been created, the fire in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish those people who have disobeyed him. And a person may say, what could a person ever do to deserve such a punishment? What could a person do to deserve such wrath, such destruction, such anger, such humiliation? The definition of good and evil very often changes from people to people and place to place. What may be good for me may not be good for you. What I consider to be good, you may consider to be evil. Let me give you some examples of this. Maybe there is a country in the world that is running out of oil. And it is good for them to invade another country in order to have access to their oil supplies. Now this invasion and this robbing that country of their oil is good for the invading country. But is it good for the other country who is being invaded and who is having their oil stolen? No, it is not good, is it? So one person's definition of what is good is another person's understanding of what is evil.